Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. My name is Danny Burke, and today I'm gonna to be giving you guys the top 10 scary mountain stories. Humans have always had an interesting relationship with mountains. They are often inhospitable, lonely places, but people love the challenge of climbing them and seeing what's up there. Sometimes though, they may regret what they find. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Death Mountain. In 1959, one of the most mysterious stories I've ever heard of took place on Russia's Dyatlov Pass, otherwise known as Death Mountain. Nine young mountaineers had gone missing Missing there, and a search team was sent out to find them. It took them a month before they found a very creepy scene before them. There was a tent which had been slashed open with a knife from the inside. There were no signs of the hikers, but all of their gear had just been left behind. Blankets, waterproofs, cameras, everything. They found barefoot footprints leading out into the snow. Soon they began to find bodies. Two males were found a mile from the tent, under a tree and in their underwear. Their bodies were covered in scratches and blood, almost as if they had tried to climb the tree. A quarter mile further, they found another male's body. He died in the snow, holding a branch and just staring back towards the campsite. They also found two others nearby who had died while trying to crawl away from the tent in the snow. The creepiest was yet to come though. They found the remaining four bodies in a hole in the snow that they had seemingly dug. They hadn't been killed by hypothermia though like the others. One of them had his skull crushed to pieces, another had his ribs smashed, the woman had her heart pierced and her eyes and tongue removed. What could have possibly caused these nine hikers to slash open their tent in the middle of the night and run out into their icy deaths? And what could have caused that physical trauma to happen to some of them? Some people say it was a yeti, aliens, or even a top secret Russian military experiment gone wrong. The case remains unsolved to this day. At number 9 now we have The Mystery Men. This story comes from Reddit but has since been deleted, only adding to its mystery. In 1988, a man was hiking along the Appalachian Trail when he noticed a bright light coming from the forest near him. He presumed it was just other hikers and decided to not investigate. He set up his camp for the night and went to sleep. He awoke in the middle of the night to see a man standing over his hammock in the dark. The man ran away and called out to other people that the hiker was awake. The hiker was terrified. He packed up and got out there fast. A few days later, he thought he had gotten enough distance, so he set up a hammock for the night. He was woken up when the hammock was cut down, wrapped up, and dragged away while he was still in it. He was then beaten to a pulp by the group who were shouting about preparing him for whatever they had planned next. Luckily, he managed to cut through the hammock and escape. The police were stumped on who this mountain group could be. Moving on to number eight now, we have the next cabin over. This story was told by her man, Ovi Began, on Jezebel. Com. She said that when she was little, her family had a weekend cottage in the mountains of Vermont. One summer night, they were sitting in the living room when a knock came from the screen door. This was quite surprising because they rarely saw other people in that area. At the door was a woman wearing a dress. She was sweaty and out of breath. Her dad talked to the woman for a while who explained that she needed a lift down to the village. The dad agreed and off they drove, leaving her, her father and her brother alone in the house. On the drive down to the village, the dad noticed the woman's dress was all torn up and muddy. She was also barefoot. She explains that she got into a huge fight with her husband in their cabin and she ran into the woods because she thought he was going to kill her. The dad realized that a murder man was now probably out there in the woods and the first house he would come across would be his family's. He dropped the woman off at a nearby friend's place and told them to call the police. He rushed back to the house and when he got there he made them shut every door and window for the night. A few days later the girl and her brother noticed that there on the back windows of the house were hand and face marks of a tall person from when they had pressed their face against the glass. It was then they realized how close of a call it may have been. Next up at number seven now we have the Big Grey Man. Ben McDwee is a mountain in Scotland that's said to be inhabited by a large grey creature referred to the locals as the Big Grey Man. The first encounters were reported in 1925. Hiker J. Norman Colley said, I began to think I heard something else than merely the noise of my own footsteps. For every few steps I took, I heard a crunch and then another crunch as if someone was walking after me but taking steps three or four times the length of my own. As the eerie crunch, crunch sounded behind me, I was seized with terror and tucked my heels, staggering blindly among the boulders for four or five miles. Other people have reported very similar stories throughout the years, leading some to believe a yeti-like creature stalks the misty peaks of Ben McDwee. We're going back to the Appalachian Trail now for our number six. This one comes from Zimby on Reddit who said, this happened to me when I was backpacking on the Appalachian Trail a few summers ago. We woke up early in the morning, got out of our tents, and there was dense mist all around us. About the same time we had packed up 
of the tents and started walking back to the main trail, we started hearing little kids laughing. I didn't react for a while because I thought I was hearing things and because no one else seemed to notice. This line of kids and one parent just came out of nowhere, walking diagonal to the train and kept laughing in this creepy way. This was early, very early in the morning, on a mountain, relatively far from other human beings. One of these kids asks us, where are you going? And someone in our group responds, we're hiking on the Appalachian Trail. The kid says, this isn't the Appalachian Trail, and they start laughing again. They continue diagonal to the trail and disappeared into the mist again but for the rest of the morning, we could still hear them laughing. Coming in at number five now, we have Green Boots. This is a nickname given to what is thought to be the body of Tsiwang Pal Jor, an Indian climber who died on Mount Everest in 1996. His body remained where it fell until being discovered by other climbers a few years later at just below 28,000 feet. As with many other people who die on Mount Everest, there is no easy way to move their body, and so Green Boots stayed there. The body of Green Boots became a landmark for climbers as they made their way up the tallest mountain in the world. Perhaps the creepiest part is that the body is often blown around the area because of the winds there. Green Boots went missing in 2014, only to reappear in 2017 in another place entirely. At number four now, we have the claw. In 1986, a scientific expedition visited Mount Owen in New Zealand to explore the caves beneath the mountain. As they wandered through in low visibility, they saw something on the ground that sent chills down their spine, the Mount Owen claw. It was enormous, way bigger than anything living in that area. After taking it away to study, the team determined it was the 3,300 year old mummified remains of an upland mower, a large prehistoric bird that had gone extinct centuries before. Next up at number three now, we have the creature. In November 2014, 20 year old British explorer Thomas Gaysford set out to explore Mount Nyangani in Zimbabwe. At around 3pm on the day of his climb, a thick bank of fog descended from the mountain and engulfed him. He decided to set set up camp and just wait out the weather. It began to rain heavily. He stayed there for the night. Thomas said that the whole night he saw creatures in the trees around him with red eyes piercing out from the dark and fog. Snakes and other animals began to circle his tent, watching him closely. He remembered that the local people had warned him the mountain was cursed. They said that any strange acting animals were not of this world. Terrified, Thomas lay there in his tent praying as the hours rolled on. When morning came and the fog cleared, he made his way down the mountain again, never stopping to look back. Coming in number two now, we have the avalanche. In 1916, during World War I, a series of avalanches in the Italian Alps killed upwards of 2,000 soldiers. The victims were mainly Italian and Austrian. The disaster became known as White Friday. In recent years, much of the shock of some local people, the melting snow and ice there has started to reveal hundreds of bodies from these soldiers who were buried in the snow over 100 years ago. Aside from the grisly discoveries of the bodies, our Archaeologists have also found tunnels, bases, and weapons that the soldiers used, all frozen in time, untouched, since the day they all suddenly died underneath the mounds of snow. And finally, number one now, we have the Berwyn Mountain UFO incident. On January 23rd, 1974, residents of the Berwyn Mountains area in northern Wales reported a loud noise and bright light in the sky as the earth shook around them. As they stepped out of their homes to investigate, presuming it to be an earthquake, hundreds of people looked up to see a pulsate orange and red glow in the sky. The police searched the area but found nothing. The official explanation was that the tremor was an earthquake that happened at the same time as a bright meteor shot across the sky. Others say that this is all just a lie and that a UFO crashed into the mountain that night and there's been a cover-up. They claim the British Ministry of Defence now holds the UFO wreckage in one of their bases. Well guys, which one of those did you find the most creepy? Do you think there are hidden things that go on in the mountains around the world or is it just people's imagination? Imagination. I'll see you guys in the comments to discuss this one. My name is Danny Burke. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.